Our title tonight is The Covenant with Noah, or The Noahic Covenant. So through the covenant with Noah, may we understand the message God wants to give us tonight. After the fall of Adam, God found Noah, the 10th generation after Adam, and God made a covenant with Noah. So there were two covenants that God made with Noah. First is the Ark Covenant. And this is the covenant in which Noah and his family were to enter the ark to escape the judgment of the flood. And the second covenant was the covenant of the rainbow. So we must know that all covenants connect to Jesus Christ, including the covenants made with Noah. So today we will learn about the Ark Covenant and the Covenant of the Rainbow. First, let us learn of the Ark Covenant. So when was it made? It was a covenant made before the judgment of the flood. And this is found in Genesis 6, verses 17 through 18. And it says, and behold, even, and behold, I, even I, am bringing the flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life. And in verse 18, God said, but I will establish my covenant with you and you shall enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. So this is the covenant God made specifically with Noah. And at this time, the Hebrew word berit was used for the first time in the Bible. So berit means covenant. So what is the significance of the Ark Covenant? It is this. Although the world was being judged, the covenant made by God regarding the coming of the seed of the woman that is found in Genesis 3.15 was still flowing in redemptive history. So that promise of the seed of the woman was still flowing through this Ark Covenant. So the Ark Covenant, who was to be saved? Noah and his family. So everyone else was destroyed, but Noah and his family survived. And this family is connected to Jesus Christ, the seed of the woman. So the line of the Messiah, the Messianic line, was not destroyed. And we must know that this Ark Covenant foreshadows Jesus Christ. And it is because Jesus Christ will save all mankind with his blood. So through this Ark Covenant, we must understand that there is salvation through Jesus Christ. So when we take a look at Genesis 6.14, God said this about the ark. He said, make for yourself an ark of gopher wood. You shall make the ark with rooms and shall cover it inside and out with pitch. So what is pitch? It is like tar so that water would not seep into the ark. But there is also a specific meaning for pitch in Hebrew. Pitch in Hebrew is koper. And it's not talking about tar. But what does it mean? It means ransom. Koper means ransom. So they were to cover the ark inside and out with a ransom. 
So the Bible is not depicting pitch as tar, but it is depicting it as a ransom. So this Ark of the Covenant, it is actually symbolizing Jesus Christ who saved all mankind as a ransom. So this symbolizes the precious blood of Jesus that was shed to save us. So this word koper, we must understand, means ransom. And it is connected to this ark. Exodus 30 verse 12 also uses the word koper, ransom, here. It says, Then each of them shall give a ransom for himself to the Lord. So this is taking the stead of someone else in order to save them. So we know Jesus became our ransom, our Redeemer, who gives salvation to all mankind by substituting his death for ours on the cross. So because of Jesus' blood, we are saved. He is our ransom. And this is found in 1 Timothy 2, six, It says, who gave himself, which is Jesus Christ, as a ransom for all. So the Ark of the Covenant, we must understand, foreshadows the ransom that Jesus is for us. And now let us discuss the second covenant with Noah, the covenant of the rainbow. When was it made? This covenant was given after the judgment of the flood. And this is found in Genesis 9, verses 11 through 17. In Genesis 9, 13, it reads, I set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a sign of a covenant between me and the earth. So this is also a covenant. So what kind of covenant was this? We must know that Noah and his family of eight, only them survive the judgment of the flood. So through water, everyone died except for Noah and his family. So imagine when they saw rain again, they must have had trauma seeing this rain. They must have thought, oh, are we going to be judged with water again? So they must have had this fear in them. So what did God do? In a sense, he was saying, do not worry. The world will not be judged with water again. When you see a rainbow among the clouds, know that I will no longer judge the earth with water. So he's saying, when you see the rain, do not be afraid. So this is a covenant of grace and mercy. So today, do you see the rainbow or not? You do see it. Is it beautiful or not? It's very beautiful. We say, oh, the rainbow is beautiful. But please, don't just take a picture of it. But remember first, God promised that he would never judge the world by water again. Remember God's love. Don't just look at the colors of the rainbow, but think of God first. And this is God's covenant with all his people. So at this time... Let us learn the differences between the Ark Covenant and the Covenant of the Rainbow. So let us learn the differences. Number one, the Ark Covenant. In this covenant, it is a very specific covenant. And God is saying that he will judge everything, everyone, except Noah and his family, who were the seeds of the word. And this shows God's justice, God's justice for this wicked world. Except for Noah and his family, everyone else was destroyed. This is the Ark Covenant.
Conversely, what about the covenant of the rainbow? Let's compare this, our covenant, with the covenant of the rainbow. And this shows that God will not judge again by water, showing God's love. So the Ark Covenant showed God's justice, that he would judge this wicked world. But the Covenant of the Rainbow showed God's love. So we see God's justice and love, both attributes that are within God through these two different covenants. And let's look at the second difference. The Ark Covenant, in its narrowest meaning or sense, is a covenant of salvation given only to Noah. So it's a very narrow and specific covenant. It is directed towards one person. In fact, it could be directed to only Noah and his family. So it's a very narrow covenant. So let us look at the words within this covenant, which is found in Genesis 6, 18. It says, but I will establish my covenant with you, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. So specifically, God says he will establish a covenant with you, which means Noah. But who else is saved? His sons, their wives, and Noah's wife. But if we compare this to the covenant of the rainbow, we see that it's not specific to only one person and his family, but it includes Noah and his descendants and all living things. So it's very wide. It's very different from the Ark Covenant in that it is directed towards every living thing. So this is a very widespread covenant. It's a covenant of security, and it's a covenant of hope. So the nuance is different. Genesis 9, verses 9 through 10. This is the covenant of rainbow. Let's read it together. Ready, begin. Now behold, I myself do establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the cattle, and every beast of the earth with you, of all that comes out of the ark, even every beast of the earth. So how could beasts understand God's covenant? But even God includes the beasts of the earth in this covenant of the rainbow. So it included all living things. What is the third difference? Now, the Ark Covenant was a limited covenant that only applied to the judgment period of the flood, right? So the Ark Covenant ended after Noah and his family left the Ark after the flood stopped and the waters dried up. However, When we compare it to the covenant of the rainbow, it's different. So the covenant of the rainbow, it's everlasting. And it continues until the Lord's return. And what does it say in Genesis 9-12? It says, for everlasting generations. So this is the sign of the covenant for everlasting generations. So until the second coming, Lord, that rainbow will show us that God will not judge this world with water. So why is the rainbow covenant bound to be a covenant that will be established forever? This is because it is the covenant that the first coming Lord fulfills. So the covenant of the rainbow is an everlasting covenant because it's a covenant that is first fulfilled by the first coming Lord 
and will be fulfilled in the end by the second coming Lord. So this covenant is connected to the first coming Lord and the second coming Lord. So what is the fulfillment by the first coming Lord? It was fulfilled by the seven words spoken on the cross. Just like there were seven colors of the rainbow, there were seven words spoken on the cross by Jesus Christ. How many colors on the rainbow? Seven colors. And Jesus spoke seven words on the cross. And at a later time, we will study these seven words that Jesus spoke on the cross. So what about the fulfillment by the second coming Lord? This is found in the work of Revelations chapter 10. Revelations 10, verses 1 and 3. And it says, it's speaking about the second coming Lord. And it says, clothed with a cloud and the rainbow was upon his head and his face was like the sun. And also when he had cried out, the seven peals of thunder uttered their voices. So let's look here. It's this, these verses say his face is like the sun and there is a rainbow above his head. So we know the book of Revelations is a bit hard to understand because it's very symbolic. So we have to uncover these symbols. So it says his face is like the sun and there is a rainbow above the head. So the sun is like sunlight. Can we look at the sunlight directly? No, because it's too bright. However, can we look at a rainbow? Yes, we see all seven colors when we look up in the rainbow. So with the sunlight, the prism of colors come out. Without sunlight, you cannot see the seven colors of the rainbow. So what does this symbolize? It refers to the event of incarnation in which the invisible God took on human flesh and appeared as the visible God. So his face is like the sun and there's a rainbow above the head. We must understand that our invisible God became visible just like this. He is our sunlight and he shines this light in the world bringing about beautiful things like the rainbow. Colossians 1.15, and it says, And he, which refers to Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. So the one who has a face like the sunlight like the sun and the seven colors of the rainbow, it's speaking of Jesus Christ who was came to this world incarnate. And Ezekiel 1.28, what does it say? It says, as the appearance of the rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day, so was the, so was the appearance of the surrounding radiance. Such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord, which refers to Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is God incarnate. He is a sunlight with the rainbow. He is the visible God. And Revelations also talks about seven peals of thunder utter their voices. And also talks about seven. So like the first coming Lord, 
The second coming Lord will end the earth with, with seven words, a perfect word. So ev after these seven words are spoken, then the old world will come to an end. So just like the first coming Lord uttered seven words, the second coming Lord too will utter seven words. These are the seven peals of thunder. So then what is the end time meaning of Noah's covenant? We must learn this today. Why should we learn about Noah's covenant? Because of Matthew 24, 37, it says, For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. So in the end, this world will be judged just like Noah's world was judged, was judged in the end. But we have time to prepare. The Bible warns us that the end days will be just like the days of Noah. So we must pay attention and learn. So the two covenants given to Noah, how can we use that to prepare in these end times? First, let's look at the Ark Covenant given to Noah. This Ark Covenant tells us that today there is an Ark that we must build. And that ark that must be built is an ark of faith. We must, today we must build our ark of faith. Why? Because the end times will be just like the days of Noah. So we too must construct our ark, this ark of faith. So let's look again at Genesis 6.14. It says, so make yourself an ark of cypress wood. And then it says, make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. So there are two things that God said to make this ark with, cypress wood and pitch. So in our ark of faith that we are constructing, we have to use these same type of materials, cypress wood and pitch. So if this is true, what is cypress wood? Cypress wood is just like our church name, evergreen. Cypress wood is an evergreen tree that is green in all seasons. It's an evergreen tree. So usually when seasons change, the tree color changes, but not this one. And it symbolizes God and the word of God, which encompasses eternal life. So God's word is eternal life. It doesn't change. It is always green and vibrant with life. That is why it says in Hosea 14, 8, I am like an evergreen cypress. Your faithfulness comes from me. This is what God says. So God himself says he's an evergreen cypress. And also in John 1, 1, it says, the word was God. So the word also is evergreen. And today, we, as we construct our faith, our ark of faith, we must construct it with the word of God that is evergreen. And what else must we construct our Ark of Faith with? Pitch. And we know pitch in Hebrew was koper, meaning ransom. 
and it symbolizes the blood of Jesus Christ, who was a ransom for us. So as we build our ark of faith, you must use it, construct it with the word of God and with the blood of Christ. So even though we're very tired at this time, you must understand that this time you're here right now on this Wednesday night, you are living in the end times and you are constructing your ark of faith. Please believe this. And you are constructing your ark of faith with the word of God. But the Bible tells us it's not only with the Word of God that you're constructing your ark of faith. Just because you receive a lot of Word doesn't mean you're constructing your ark correctly. But also, it must be you must be covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. So receiving the Word of God is the process of building our ark of faith with the Word. But we must coat the insight and outside of ourselves with the blood of our Lord that was spilled on the cross. Because without the atoning blood of our Lord, our ark will sink in the waters of sin. Right? Without Jesus' blood, we are not covered of our sins. Only Jesus' blood can cover our sins. That's why during this Lent, we have to remember Jesus especially during this time, so that the dirty waters of sin will not enter us. That's why the blood of Jesus is so precious to us. And that is why we need his blood. And what kind of blood is this? It is a precious holy blood. And do you think the Bible talks about the blood as precious? Yes, of course it does. In 1 Peter 1.19, let's read it out loud. Ready, begin. But with precious blood, as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. Why is Jesus' blood precious? Because it is so clean that it cleans not only us, but our children, our family, our neighbors, our friends. It is the blood that cleans all things. Please believe this. If we have the blood of Jesus Christ, we can live and we will not be covered by the waters of sin. That is the pitch that we need, the blood of Jesus Christ. So during Lent, please have the power and the blood of Jesus with you. So we should pray like this tonight. So we always end our Wednesday night service with prayer. So we should pray like this to build my ark of faith tonight. Lord, you have given me the cypress tree of the word so that I may also have the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ so that no gap will be open for sin to enter. Please fill up my cracks and completely cover me with the Lord's precious blood. Let us pray like this tonight and let us be healed. And like Noah, we must receive also the covenant of the rainbow. So in the end times, what will the covenant and the rainbow do? It says souls of all kinds, just like all the colors of the rainbow, will be in perfect union in the Lord. So the Ark of the Covenant is an individual Ark of Faith that we must build, right? We must have that everlasting, evergreen word and the precious blood of Jesus Christ in us. But the Covenant of the Rainbow, it is for every one of us. All of us sitting here today, we all have different colors, right? Look at the rainbow in the sky after the rain. Each color is different. Some people have characteristic of red or orange, yellow, green. It's all different. But how beautiful is all the colors together? Imagine if you look at the rainbow, it's only red. 
or only orange. But the rainbow has all different seven colors together, and it is so beautiful. God made us look at this beauty. And it is so beautiful together. And so in these end times, we must remember the covenant of the rainbow. Even though we are all different colors, together we are so beautiful before the Lord. Please understand this. And this is what is said about the covenant of the rainbow, and it is found in Galatians 3.28. It says, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free man. There is neither male nor female. So not only red, orange, yellow, or green, or blue, but it says, For you are all one in Christ Jesus. In Jesus we are one. We are all colors of the rainbow. We are beautiful together. So please remember this holy covenant. All of you, remember, don't think you're the only beautiful one, but all of you together make one beautiful rainbow. And this was the covenant given to Noah and to all of us. And Ephesians 1.10 it says, that is the summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heavens and things upon the earth in him. So in him are all of us, whether we're red, orange, yellow, green, blue. We're all in Jesus Christ together. So then why does the Bible connect both the first coming Lord and the second coming Lord to the rainbow? It's very easy. It is because it embraces all different colors, showing the breath and great love of the Lord. In us, we are all the seven beautiful colors of the rainbow. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you are beautiful because Jesus is beautiful. So when we receive the love of Jesus Christ, we can also give his love. And we are all showing the beautiful love of Christ together. So please understand that when you show Jesus' love, you are glorifying Jesus Christ. So all the covenants that are recorded in the Bible, these are the covenants made with us today. Even though it may have been made thousands of years ago, they are still covenants that apply to all of us today. So with your faith, you can save, help save your children, your family. You must believe in this with an amen your wives, your husbands, your children, your siblings, all of you will have this covenant together. And the last verse for tonight is Deuteronomy 29, verses 14 through 15. So before they entered Canaan, God gave this covenant to the second generation through Moses. So this covenant is with us. Let's read it together. Ready, begin. Now, not with you alone am I making this covenant and this oath, but both with those who stand here with us today in the presence of the Lord our God and with those who are not with us here today. Amen. So you have to say amen loudly. At this time, God is giving the covenant to us as well. So when you believe in these verses, you, your family, you are sitting here representing them. Even though you, all your families may not be here, you are the representative for them. You are taking on this covenant for them. So that is why we receive it with an amen. We say amen. 
So all our descendants, all our parents, our siblings who are not here, our children, you say amen, and God is giving the covenant to them as well. It is an amazing covenant. So when you pray tonight, pray that the covenant that was given to Noah will be given to you and your family members as well. Pray that God will grant this covenant to you, your family members, and pour on upon them the blessings that the Lord has promised. So even though they are not here, they could still receive the blessings of the covenants. So during this time of Lent, may we eagerly read, listen to, and understand the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, and the New Testament, the New Covenant, which God has given us as gifts, so that you may receive and enjoy all the blessings that God has promised you from generation to generation, to you, to your family, your children, your parents, your siblings. May you all receive the same covenants and blessings. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear loving Father God, through the covenants given to Noah, the Ark Covenants and the Covenant of the Rainbow, we believe that as we live in these end times, you have also given these covenants to us, and we thank you for allowing us to understand this. Father God, through this word, may our faith only grow, and may we continue to construct our Ark of Faith, and may the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the blood that saves, may we be able to build up our Ark with this precious blood so that the waters of sin does not seep in in our lives. And we want to be those who are able to embrace others, no matter what color we may see, may we see the beauty in them as you do, Lord. And may we be those who exemplify the beauty of Christ in our lives. And Father God, through this covenant made with Noah, may we receive it as ours, as our families, as our loved ones' covenant, and may the blessings and the promises also be passed on to us and to our loved ones. We believe this is happening, and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us give glory to God. <laughs>